Now, what if I told you that getting as rotating and as open at impact as the top players in the world is not only possible, but it's extremely achievable for every golfer out there. So if you don't believe me, look at this player here. This is one of my online students, 76 years young. We've got the correct pieces in his golf swing to be able to get that open. That's why he's got there. It's not because of any crazy flexibility or mobility. He is absolutely doing what you need to be able to get into those positions. So I'm going to talk about the five main things and pieces you need in your golf swing to be able to get that level of open and rotated at impact. So first one, flared feet, especially your lead foot. So bring your attention to my very muddy shoes. So just been raining nonstop here in the UK. You wouldn't be able to know from the blue sky, but it has been raining nonstop for the last month and a half. No way to avoid these muddy shoes. So as you can see here, this nice, lovely little flare there of the lead foot. So that is so crucial to getting open. If you don't do that, you're not gonna get open unless you're extremely athletically gifted. So from here, when we flare out that front foot there, that is opening up the range of motion that you can perform into your hip capsule, your hip socket. So if I've got this flared, I'm gonna have a much greater range of motion because if I have it straight which is vast majority of golfers and sadly most golfers keep it straight just for aesthetics just because of the look of it they don't want to look funny they'd rather perform worse but look better I don't even think it looks better to be honest but that is now closing off that hip capsule that hip socket is now done with the amount of range of movement of motion it can perform I can't now rotate as much so with that front foot dead straight and I let's say get as rotated as I can those hips that's about as much as I can do not bad but that's at the end of my range of motion unlikely that I'm going to get there so now I'm going to flare it look at the range of motion I can now get into into that left hip that is a ridiculous difference in range of motion and you feel less stress on your body doing that so you feel more stress keeping it flat which is why so many golfers think they don't have the mobility to rotate because their front foot is in a silly position it is dead straight and when you ask them it's because they want to keep it looking aesthetic don't care about that get that front foot nicely flared and that's going to help you a ton so flare that front foot and let's see ourselves getting a little bit more open so number two this is where we get into what i call creating the environment to be able to get open so this is called having an adequate amount of hand and arm depth at the top of your swing. So this is getting to ourselves into a position to where we can get open and hit the shot how we want to. So if I'm getting up to top here, I want to see my left arm across my shoulder plane and my hands at the minimum, if I had a line dead straight down here over my ankles, even better over my heels there. Because then as I turn and I rotate, because to get more open, we need to rotate more, rotation brings the hands a little bit outwards. So we need to account for that. Now, of course, because that ball's on the ground, you're gonna have a little dropping effect of the hands. They go down and out. But then as I'm doing that, when I'm rotating with good depth, now that club's on good path and I can just continue to turn. Because I see so many golfers up here, bringing the hands and arms dead straight up. Maybe they're trying to drop it down, hit bump, and then still managing to try and turn amongst all that. But when a golfer is up here and they try to get open, that club's gonna fly out in front of them when they have a lack of that lead arm and hand depth. So I wanna see golfers get these lead arm and those hands a little bit more around there. A great little drill to do for it is getting something like a swing plate. So a swing plate here with the extension pole. We're gonna see this long pole, which I can extend right on out here to where all I have to do then, if I place this just around my shoulder plane range, so blocking my right shoulder, it's gonna force me, if I rotate my body nicely, to swing underneath the stick. So if I have something like a practice tool like this, swing underneath it, I'm gonna be in a much better place with my depth, so then I can turn, get open, and I'll be able to produce good club path. If you want one of these, there is a link in the description for 10% off the swing plate. Absolutely brilliant to do, but really make sure to get good adequate hand and arm depth, you're getting good rotation in the backswing. Rotation is what brings the hands and arms around, just like I said in the downswing. Rotation brings the hands more out. In the backswing, rotation brings the hands more around. If you're restricting your turn in the backswing, it's gonna be really hard to get open. Having something like here, like the swing plate, swinging underneath it, good turn in the backswing, 
is gonna get you way more open. Number three is huge, and that is having the shaft shallowing in the downswing. So shallowing the shaft, that's the center of mass of the golf club, pitching behind in the downswing. So from the point that it was, in the top of the backswing, pitching behind from that point. So shallowing doesn't necessarily mean dropping the club underneath you, doesn't necessarily mean swinging into out, it just means having that center of mass drop more behind than where it was at the top of the backswing. So that's where if we can get that center of mass dropping behind, so dropping, falling down a little bit in this direction, flattening out, that's gonna increase the amount of chance we are to be able to turn. The more we shallow it, the more open we need to get at impact. The more steep we are, so shaft standing up, the least or less rotation we need going into the golf ball to be able to function. So that's where, of course, more rotation is gonna help for club-based control, path control, loads of good things, even it has a good relation to strike location. So that's where, if we're steep, we are then gonna be at the mercy of having to do something to reorganize shaft movement. Usually we'll see players early extend, normally see we'll see players backing up on the shot, tilting back, which lies down the shaft later. They'll stall that rotation, they'll flip the hands, they'll come to the conclusion they can't get open because their body isn't able to do it. When it's in reality, the shaft getting steep. So like we said, we want that shaft to be lying down and then turning. Every little bit of shallowing helps, so important. So, there are many different reasons to get, let's say, fixing your steep shaft to make it shallow or getting the club to shallow. Loads of different variables. I've got a whole course on that called the Ultimate Guide to Shallowing or the Complete Guide to Shallowing the Downswing. There's a link to that in the description. So loads of different ways from left wrist flexing, having the right elbow getting front, nice light and loose arms, forearm pronation, loads of different things. But there's a simple way to do it. And that is have an alignment stick, gripping the alignment stick up the left-hand side of the golf club, getting up to the top of your swing, and then having the stick point in front of you as we move down. So lighten that grip pressure, get that stick to point in front of you as you move down, the club shaft is lying down, then you can get more open and rotate through. So, so much of getting rotated and open, our impact is to do with what you're doing earlier in your golf swing rather than your mobility. So having that stick point in front, we could get out to top and pause, then in front, and then swing through. Really hard to make good strike with doing that drill, but it's more to get you to where you are getting that stick in front, giving you the reps, and then replicating that with a golf ball in the way. So if we can shallow that shaft, we're gonna have a tremendously better chance to be able to get open and rotate. So number four, hip tilt, maintaining your hip tilt, and hip depth. So I'm pairing these two together because they both go hand in hand. So what I see so many players do is they'll bump their hips. That lifts up the left side of the pelvis, which then slides the pelvis. So a lot of players will be trying to bump and then turn because that was what an instruction used to be like. So when you, like we said, you bump that hip, the left side raises up. Now you can see as a reaction, what's happened to my upper body? it's tilted backwards. So now it's incredibly hard for me to be able to turn. One thing we've got to remember with golf, as we know, the simplicity that the ball is on the ground, we're trying to hit that ball. So with the ball being on the ground, we have got to be tilted to the golf ball. We've got to have this inclination here. If that inclination gets lost with either the hips, the left side lower than the right, or the shoulders, that's going to be extremely difficult to be able to rotate. It's going to be almost impossible. We could do it, it will really hurt the lower back. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that that left hip, left side of the pelvis stays down as we're turning through the shot. So this is where if we've got a great shallowing piece in here, that help the club stay on path as we keep that left hip staying down. But all you'll need to do is do that movement and you're gonna be in a much better spot for being able to get open. So really making sure that we are keeping that left side down with this little drill here. So just grab an alignment stick, put it through the belt loops, and when the left hip comes up, we'll talk about that in the next point. So, keeping the stick through your belt loop, point it down and turning around. That gets you nice open because it maintains your tilt really well. I've done this drill a ton with my own golf swing, and this was really instrumental for me getting more open. Now, hip depth, so why we've paired this with a tilt, because if we get good tilt, we get good hip depth, and if we have good hip depth, we have good hip tilt. What is hip depth? So depth, like we talked about before, better depth we've got, hands and arms more behind it in relationship to the hands and arms. So when it comes to the 
hips, that means the deeper the hips are, the more they're moving back. So, so many golfers will have their hips slightly move forward in the backswing, continue to move forward in the downswing. That will level out your tilt and that will move you full, close to the ball. That will make you unable to be able to get open and rotate. So, we want to see players have their right hip move back in that backswing. So, right hip move back, like someone's grabbing the right trouser pocket, pulling it back. And then we want to see them do that, their left hip in the downswing. Someone's pulling that left trouser pocket and pulling it back, which is getting them nice and open. That's such a key thing here. We want to be pushing that left hip back. You can see as soon as I push that left hip back, you can see I get rotated, I get open. Pushing the left hip back is really the movement pattern that gets you open. But to be able to make that work in your goal swing, you need these other little pieces in there. So, absolutely, this drill requires no introduction on my channel as I can't go a few videos without having it in there because it's such an important drill to do. You all know if you're regular viewers here what the drill is here, pushing the chair back in the backswing with your right hip, then pushing it back with the left hip in the downswing keeps that hip depth and that will keep your tilt as well. The best of both worlds with it, let's give it a go. Gets you nice and open there. Absolutely brilliant. Hip depth is so important. It's the one that I am talking about with my students online on Skillist all the time. So just like you saw with my senior golfer student at the start, he's all done via online lessons as absolutely, he's from Tennessee. I'm from the UK, of course, so they're not in person. Actually, all of my lessons are done online. So if you want lessons, absolutely, there is a link in the description to give you and get you to the page that I do all my online lessons on. All my lesson options are on there, all my plans, all my reviews. So absolutely, if you want one, you know where I am. So the last one here, left side extension for number five. So this is where, as we're coming from shaft parallel into the golf ball, if we're pushing that left hip back continually, you're gonna see it how the left leg is gonna gradually straighten coming into the shot. So with that left leg gradually straightening, you're gonna see that's pushing that left hip back even more. That's getting me open. That's turning me around the corner. So many players, they'll have great things go up to impact and then they'll just really slow down their rotation. But you'll see their left leg stay bent for a long time. We want that left leg to snap. That's what we want. So if we can get that left leg to snap, pushing the hips back, that opens you up more and gets you very, very rotated. So with the movement we want, Good drill to do for it, to get yourself rotated and open with that left side extension and teach it. And as you can imagine, what does that do to the left side of the pelvis? That lifts it up on its own. You don't need to try to lift that hip up. Getting good left side extension going through the golf ball will do it for you. So just grab an alignment stick as a drill, put it on the toe line, about a foot or so behind your feet, and then just drag this up into the air all via your left side extension. If you're just extending that left side, you're going to see how this stick is going to raise up because the left side extension not only gets the left hip going back, it gets the left shoulder going up and around, rotates the chest, gets you in some right side bend also. That propels the club into the air or the stick. Absolutely brilliant. So that's all being done just via my left leg extension. I wasn't trying to drag that club up, not even slightly. It was all via that move. And when we put that all together, we are gonna be nicely getting open at impact. Now, absolutely, maybe to a Dustin Johnson level of rotation, we might not all be able to achieve, but we can all get open, share that similarity to what the top tour players have. Might not all be to that crazy amount, but we can all get open, especially to where we're seeing all of your hips, back of your hips at impact. So, absolutely, there'll be more in depth on this topic on one of my courses as well the ultimate guide to rotation in the downswing. So absolutely, there's a link to that in the description. So that really encapsulates everything in here, but even more with tailored practice plans to each issue, because not everyone will need to do all of these. Be surprised if there is someone who needs to do all of these, but you need to know what one applies to your golf swing to then get it into your swing. And there's good practice plans that are perfectly made for each issue. So. Of course, if you're an early extender as well, there is a course for that as well. Fixing your early extension masterclass. So much down there in the description. Have a good look at it. Have a good look on that skillist page. See what catches your fancy on there. So absolutely, if you like this video, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction, just like this, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified anytime I put out a video.